Well, good morning, dear listeners and dear viewers, to another episode, week two of Navigating the New Normal in the Workplace with my dear colleague, Mr. Len Adams. Len, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, listeners and viewers. Good morning, (laughs) Michelle. Yes, yes, here we are for week two. And uh, this week's topic, Len, is... I've just graduated, now what? Okay. Yes, so we're now tackling the world of recent graduates, whether it's from a two-year college or whether it's from a four-year or from their master's, right? And looking and talking about what the workplace looks like for them, um, especially during this age of a pandemic let me uh, let me quote the atlantic uh they said by the end of the current academic year american schools will have conferred an estimated 3.7 million high school diplomas 1 million associate degrees and 2 million bachelor degrees. Many of these 6 million plus graduates will soon pursue another degree, but many others will enter a historically terrible labor market and one that's especially brutal for young workers. Okay, well, this is not, we're not into negative chat, but I wanted to quote it. What do you think graduates are to expect in the labor market, Len? Oh boy, (laughs) okay. Uh Uh, And the listeners should know that Michelle and I made a decision last week that the topic was going to be a surprise each week. (laughs) Yes. There's been zero preparation for this. This is the first time I'm hearing what the topic is. So this is completely extemporaneous. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let's see how I do extemporaneously. (laughs) Uh, First of all, this is not the first time the graduates are going into or coming into a horrible market. Mm -hmm. We can go back historically and look at, uh, I mean, even uh, the year that um, I would have graduated because I went at night, but the the year I would have graduated was a horrible year um, and people get through it. So um, there there is, there's a couple of things that graduates have to remember. First of all, okay, on a positive note, there's always attrition in the job market, okay? So, you know, as bad as things seem to be, positions do get created. Now, there may not be as many in a market like this, but they're they're, they're out there. You know, there are industries that will still hire and still absorb people and still have need to bring people up the ladder. So it's it's a matter of a bit more research, a bit more, digging in and, and looking harder. You know, you're not going to come out on June 25th and be working July 1st. You have to really dig in and, and be prepared maybe for a longer time. Um, what I suggest to people is, I'm sorry, that drawer was driving me crazy. Uh, <laughs> what I suggest to new graduates is, uh, first of all, be open to trying new things, number one. Uh, Don't be closed-minded relative to type of position, compensation. You know, every graduate comes out and says, okay, I want $75,000, you know, a new Porsche and, you know, an unlimited expense account. And that's probably not going to happen. So you you may have to take something um, maybe below your expectation just to get into the job market and recognize that things will get better over time. And, you know, you may have to make a couple of moves in your career uh, to catch up. Okay. Because we all know if you stay in one job for a very long time, even though I've done that, um, you don't always catch up. So you may have to make moves to, to get your salary up uh, to par. Okay. Especially when you're coming in, in a lower position or a lower salary range because of the market. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, you know, how do I do that? What do I do? There's not much out there. You know, Tap into your alumni network. Every college has a great alumni network. Don't be afraid, ashamed, or embarrassed to tap into it. Right. Uh, reach out to people to network. Even if it's not for a job within their company, you can ask for advice for the industry they're in and see where they could point you or give you some good advice as to 
you know, what you can do. Uh, don't uh, downplay starting out as a temp somewhere. Right. Uh, I, I, I could tell you we have a client mm -hmm. in the past two years brought on maybe 20 college graduates in a particular because they had a specific project mm -hmm. and what they told us was this project will probably lead to a full-time job and they hired just about every single one of them and they stayed on as temps for maybe six or eight months and then they brought them on as full-time employees in a great environment it was a bank and moved, moved their career so don't poo poo it and you know i have to tell you to get 20 people uh in a market over the last two years before this and tell 20 college grads, you're going to start as a temp. It was like, mm -hmm. what are you crazy? I'm not starting as a temp. But we really had to convince them that, you know, this is a good opportunity. And every single one of them came back and thanked us because they wound oh, up with, a, with an excellent opportunity, great salary, and, you know, great training. So don't poo-poo that. You know, temp jobs can oftentimes lead to a full-time position, especially in a market like this where companies sometimes are reluctant to make a full-time hire. They're not sure where the workflow was going to be or what the budgets are going to be like. But if you go in mm -hmm. uh, many times as a temp, you become part of the woodwork. And before you know it, you're there and they really start relying on you. And before you know it, you get hired. So when I've, I've had that numerous times in my career, when I was running another company, I, I'll never forget. We had a, uh, this is going back many years when we had paper files, we had a backlog of files that had to be filed. Mm -hmm. And I brought in a temp. And before I know it, she would get the, t the filing done and say, what else do you need me to do? And I said, oh, okay, can you help me with this? And inside of three months, it was like, I needed her. She was there every day and she kept looking for work and finding things to do to help there me. There you go. Created a full-time job for her. And if you would have asked me three or four months earlier, was I going to hire? I said, no, I'm not going to hire. But this is what happens oftentimes. So don't poo-poo it. Um, you know, and you're going to have to do your research. You know, you may have gone to school to be in hospitality management. Well, you know what? That's probably not a growing field today. So look to see where your skills are transferable. You know, hospitality management could lead to some sort of customer service role in another industry, maybe in the medical industry, maybe in, in uh, the technology industry. So, you know, look to see where you could, uh, could utilize your skills elsewhere. As I like to say, when you're supposed to zig, sometimes you have to zag. That's right. I like that. You got to zig <laughs> and zag. Um, you've mentioned so many helpful tidbits. I, I want to go back to when you mentioned uh, taking a position that's below expectation. Um, I, I, think it, I think it's a good point to make because regardless of where you know what year you graduate i think there's always going to be that point of uncertainty like what's my next job and you have to be open to opportunities right and and actually Absolutely. yeah I, I think that if you i know i did it i did internships i took temp positions and they gave me insight into that field uh invaluable insight um Len, how would you, what would you suggest to um, a graduate who just, who's putting their resume out there? What, what definitely should they have on their resume to show that they can do the job? Any internships they may have done, any part-time work mm -hmm. they may have done, even if it was delivering newspapers. You know, delivering newspapers is, is equivalent to being in your own business, right? Yeah, You're your you own know. boss. You have to get up in the morning or... On the weekend, you have to get there. You have a deadline to get the papers out. So, mm -hmm. you know, show those skills and, and showcase. Think of anything you've done throughout high school and college uh, outside of school. Also think of what you've done inside of school, any clubs you were a member of, any, any organizations that, you know, you know you were the, the vice president of the, the school newspaper. Okay. So that shows leadership. That shows dedication. That shows the ability to, to meet deadlines uh, shows maybe sometimes uh, managing a team. If you were there, you know, maybe you were in the, the glee club. I don't know, but, but show these things. If you don't have anything else, if you didn't work, then think about what you did in, in school that could be equivalent to a job. Okay. And, and showcase them, uh, let people know what, what you've done and what you can do. All right. Um, 
And the other, well, you just you just made a point about um, with with taking uh, taking a job. Don't be afraid to take a job, even if it's not what you were thinking, because you don't know where it could lead. Okay, and you know, unlike a hundred years ago when I was a kid, we didn't take a job with the ex. We took a job back then with the expectation you were going to stay for a long time. Right now, the economy is different. The, the the world view is different. So you know, people take a job, they work six months, then they go something else, they try something else. Take something. It builds a network for you. It builds skills. It builds your confidence. Right. Again, even if it's under what you thought you were going to do, okay? Because if you're just sitting home and you and you don't take anything, then you start to have self pity, and you start to lose your self confidence. And before you know it, you're out three months, six months, nine months, a year. And then a, pot a potential employee is going to say, well, what did you do the last year? Oh, I looked. All right, you looked. You couldn't find anything. There was not one job you could find. Okay. Uh, you know, you couldn't uh, deliver pizza. Hmm. Do something. Do, do something, at least to, for your own self-esteem. And you never know who you're going to meet and run into. And talk to everybody. and Let everyone know you're looking. Okay. No matter how right. simple it may seem. Or silly. You ask anybody, everyone you know. Tap into your parents' networks. Okay, you don't know who their friends are and what they can do for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Len, is the cover letter dead? I have to tell you, I rarely read cover letters. Now, this is me. All right, I go right to the resume because the cover letter usually accomplishes one of two things. Mm -hmm. It's targeting exactly what the, the candidate thinks is the job and they're going to tell you all the things that they think you want to hear. Uh, and that to me, it's a lot of fluff. You know, we have, at least in, in most companies, we're getting multitudes of resumes every day coming in. And when you add the additional 20 or 30 or 40 seconds to read that cover letter and add that on to looking at the resume, we're more interested in the resume, okay, than the cover letter. At least that's my opinion. That's how we work. If so, oh, yes, a couple of letters dead. If oh. it's not dead, it's dying a slow death. Okay. However, if they ask for a cover letter, give it to them, right, Len? Absolutely. And, and, and spell check. Oh. Grammar check. You know, there, there's a great program, and I, I think there's a free version. There's also a paid version. And I, have no, I don't have stock in it, so I'm not, uh, not promoting it for any reason other than I use it personally called Grammarly. Yes. Okay. I run everything I write through it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm writing a long time, but I still find things and mistakes that I make or gram grammatical mistakes, spelling mistakes, run it through because that is your representation, even your resume. Okay. Run it through Grammarly, have other people look at it. Okay. Check it, double check it, triple check it. Because the last thing you want to do is put something out that is a representation of you that has a misspelling, a grammatical error, or, you know, any one of the above. Yes, so be absolutely. Very, very careful. Even I, in your emails. Ooh, Even in your emails. Oh, yes. boy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll, oh go, boy. I'll go the extra step and say, watch what your email uh, address is. You know, if it, ha I, you know, if it says stripper Hot lady 32 yes <laughs> right you you know i'm not saying there's anything wrong with having an email with that name but if you're looking for a gig you may want to consider one that's a little bit less uh how can i say um colorful descriptive <laughs> and descriptive um <laughs> and so you're absolutely right about uh i i remember one of my resumes did have one misspelling on it but the individual told me and i was like wow i totally missed that and you know i think mistakes happen you miss things and you you really make an effort to try to avoid that but um you know if you're if you really give off a good interview right if you yeah i mean it's not the be all and end all but, you, but you know i'll tell you a story years and years ago I wrote a brochure and I worked on this brochure for months and months and months. Mm -hmm. And I had several people proof it. I proofed it. And this is before computers and, you know, Grammarly and all that. And everybody, everybody signed off on it and said, yep, looks great. 
I sent it to the printer. We printed 2,000 of them. They came back. I had them in the office. A friend of mine was an accountant. He came to visit me one day. I handed him the brochure. I said, hey, Tommy, take a look at my brochure. What do you think? He opens it up, uh -oh. reads the first page, and said, you have a misspelling. Oh. I said, what? He said, yes, you spelled community. I'll, know, I'll still remember this. Community was C-U-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y instead of C-O-M. Oh. Said, oh, my God. My okay, now I had 2,000. I was working for somebody. I said, oh. How do I, what do I do here? So we used it. Do you know not one person ever picked up that misspelling? Really? Other than him? God, hand to God. No one ever else picked it up. It was amazing to me. Okay? But at that point, I, you know, 2,000 brochures was expensive back then. I couldn't throw them out. So we said, all right, we'll take a shot. We'll see what happens. And uh, I would make a joke of it with people. I'd say, you didn't pick it up? You know, it's a contest if you pick up the, the misspelling in there. So, you know, you have to try to turn it around then. That's but, right. Um, yeah, so, but, so be careful. Yeah, but be careful. Be careful. Yeah. So, since we're And yes, on that email point, uh, you know, yes. the email. And, you know, there's a lot of controversy, too. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw something out there. Please. Pictures on resumes. Pictures on resumes. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, there's one school of thought that says, well, you could put the picture on the resume because people can go on LinkedIn and see, see you anyway. Are. Okay. But I'm still not a fan of pictures on resumes. I, I subscribe to the old school that you don't want to put your picture out there. Um, you know, and then theoretically, people are not supposed to go and, and search for you if they sent your resume anyway. So uh, I, I, I still advocate keeping it off. Okay. Also, we, I guess we could talk about resumes a little bit if you'd like. Please. Uh, be careful what you put on in terms of extracurricular activities, clubs you belong to. You know, I'm a proud member of the uh, U.S. Communist Club. Okay. Well, you know, <laughs> you may, you may want to tone that down a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, think, I think it's a fair point. Um, you know, in speaking about the don'ts, you mentioned um, spelling, what you put on the resume. Let's talk about interviews, right? Okay. Let's talk about interviews. You know, six months ago, it was in person. Now, they're all virtual. What absolutely is a don't during virtual interviews? And this during virtual? Yeah, and we're talking about uh, virtual etiquette here. Yes, absolutely. I, I, that's a good point. Um, on a virtual interview, first of all, treat a virtual interview as if it were an in-person interview. Mm -hmm. Dress the part, okay? You know, wear the suit and tie as if you were going into an interview. That's right. I know there's a lot of controversy on that. I think you treat it as if you're there in person, absolutely. okay? Be careful with your background. Yes. Okay? You know, I see some people, they're in their bedroom, the bed's oh. unmade. You know, there's, there's crap all over the place. Clean it up, you know, make it look presentable. If at all possible, try to go to somewhere else. Now, yes. I, now I know if that's where your computer is, it's difficult. But, you know, you can do a Zoom interview with your phone or with a laptop or with an iPad. So maybe you can go to, you know, a blank wall where there's nothing behind you. Zoom has a great tool where you could upload a background. So, you know, maybe you can upload something. I, I did a Zoom call with the, one, of my, one of my suppliers mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. And she was in this beautiful apartment. It was a penthouse. I said, oh, your apartment's beautiful. And she said to me, it's not my apartment. It's a background. <laughs> so if you ever saw my apartment, it's, it's a little tiny shack, a little tiny apartment in Queens. You, you thought this woman was on Fifth Avenue, okay, overlooking Central Park, because that's the background. So, you know, something like that may, may make sense, even if it's a conversation piece. And you could say, you know, you could be upfront about it, but at least it, it, it gives you something to talk about. But, you know, be careful with your background. Uh, show up on time. Yes. Make sure that there's, there's, there's very little distraction in the background with, with noise. And I know it's difficult if, you know, especially if you're a college graduate and you have young brothers and sisters around, you know, and they're yelling and screaming, you know. I think interview, interviewers are, are um, more forgiving today yes. of that situation because of the world we're in, but try to keep it to, to, a, to a, a minimal, uh, to a minimum. 
all right, so that it's not too much of a distraction. All right, you know, TVs in the background, radios glaring and all that. Try to try to really, you know, get that get that down. And just like a, a, a normal interview, focus. Focus, yes. pay attention. Focus, pay attention. You know, look at the camera. Now I'm doing the wrong thing right now. Yeah. I should I'm, be looking at the camera. And I'm I'm looking okay. at you I'm and I could be at looking screen. at yeah. Right. So I should be looking at the camera, which is but then I'm not looking at really you. Looking at you, but then I'm not looking at you. So, <laughs> but be aware of that because as I'm looking at it now, I know I'm not looking at the camera. Right. Okay. Right. So be aware of these things. Practice it. Practice it. The great thing about a, a Zoom or a telephone interview now is you can practice. I mean, you, you can, can practice, practice for an in-person interview too. But you know, you can set yourself up how you're going to sit and all that. You know, the one negative is no one gets your handshake. So. Yeah. <laughs> Some people do like, you know, some interviewers like to see what the handshake is like. You know, is it firm? Is it wimpy? Is it, you know, is it washy? Yeah, yeah. wet hands. So well, that goes away. Okay. No, that's, you know, good. that's a good point. Play. That's a good point. Yeah. I like, I like your point about the Zoom backgrounds. I will say, if you're doing an interview, um, be mindful of the background itself. I mean, I think it's great. The individual you mentioned, I've seen some really snazzy apartments. I don't know if like a Corona advertisement you know on the beach is a, uh, yeah you know like so like absolutely. Use your judgment right yeah absolutely use your judgment and you know even in terms of if you're you're in your room and you have you know your favorite movie was uh i don't know goldfinger i don't know uh and you have a crazy poster off you know maybe you want to turn it around yeah, turn, turn for it purposes around. Of, of the interview you know <laughs> again it's a, it's a professional interview so you want to treat it as such that's right that's right. Um, let's talk about LinkedIn for a minute. Um, we all use it. Uh, I say you shouldn't have all your eggs in one basket. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by your all your eggs in one basket. In terms Meaning, of should individuals only apply for jobs via LinkedIn? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know. You have to apply through through every medium there is, uh, you know, all the all the career boards, all the job boards, uh, uh, research industries. Go online, target specific companies, and see what they have. They may not have their jobs on LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn tells you every job is on there, but I'm going to tell you yes. they're not. Okay, you know, and again, I don't own stock in any of these companies, but you know, Indeed, Monster, Career Builder, go on all of them and see what's out there. Go to industry associations and see some industry associations have specialty job boards. If there's an industry you're interested in, right. look at those, okay? And you know, we brought up, there's another point I wanted to bring up. We were talking about backgrounds and all that. Right. Facebook, Facebook is very interesting, okay? Be careful what you post mm. on Facebook. Oh, we're going into a whole other. I know we're going into we're, we're going some, into some interesting territory. Yes, we now, are. Again, le legally, a company is not supposed to really search you out and you know look at your backgrounds. But let's be honest and pragmatic. People do it, okay. And when they see you over the weekend, now let me preface it by saying what people do on their own time is their own business, and I. I believe that and I agree with that 150%. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're in a competitive market, you know, when, when they see you, you know, chugging half naked, uh, you know, uh, you know. Going you, to the club, wanna, going to the club, you know. You know. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is it's everybody's right to do what they want to do, but or at the very least, keep your Facebook private. So it's not open to everybody, right? So, that's, you know, be aware of that. Be aware. I, I'm glad you raised that. You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of individuals, I don't know, it, you know, they think that perhaps when you post online that employers may not be looking at that. I, I will dare say that before you get that phone call or that email, they would have already looked you up. They very well may. They very well may. And whether okay. it's right or wrong, ethical or not, it happens. So right. be prepared. Be prepared for it. Right, Len? Well, I'll also tell you, you know, there's an interesting thought process on this of being 22 versus being my age. Okay. Things you've done at 22 that go on social media and that go on the internet, they don't go away. 
They're there forever. So think forward if you're 22, putting this stuff up there, and now you're 40 and you have three kids, do you want your kids seeing those, whatever it was, I'm not making judgments, but whatever it was, do you want your young kids, or maybe by that point, your teenage kids, looking at that and seeing it? So That's a fair point. I, I You know, I'm thinking right? about my 20s <laughs> and I've got photos, but they're in my possession, you know? <laughs> right, they're not on Facebook. Or... And they're not on Facebook. And I mean, photos of any setting, right? I'm not, so, I'm not talking about any compromises. Photos, right, but, right, right. <laughs> but <laughs> the point is, is that that's a fair, that's a fair they're and forever. interesting. They're for, they're there forever. And I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, let's talk about um, artificial intelligence. Um, you know, ATS systems, ATS systems, right? Automated tracking systems. Can you explain to someone who perhaps never even knew what this, what this is, why it's important? Well, it's important because it really scans the resumes mm -hmm. for certain keywords and certain patterns in, in your background in terms of, even if it's not a specific keyword, it may be something you've done in your career and it's going to you know bring you to the top of the list now it's interesting because i wrote an article a couple of about a year or so, so ago uh saying um and, and the premise was will hr will will humans be replaced by artificial intelligence I remember that in article. human resources and i'm of the school that humans will not be replaced because i still believe mm -hmm. in my heart that Sometimes those words may bring you to the top, but you may not be a right fit personality wise right. for a specific position. And conversely, the words may not be there, but in my interview with you or in my initial screen, I'm talking about people now that are already in my system, I may remember something about you, okay? Or that I may have a note about you that may mean you're a right fit for that position. Mm -hmm. So I think artificial, artificial intelligence is great for the processing quickly of, of resumes, but I don't think that it's gonna be the be all and end all. I still think there's gonna be the interview and there's gonna be that that feeling, you know, in the pit of your stomach that, you know what, I like this person. Sure. They don't punch all the, they don't check all the boxes, but there's something there that I think is, is a good fit. Okay, and artificial intelligence, I don't think is gonna do that. Even with all the psychometric stuff and, all the, all the things they're talking about, you know, maybe I'm old school, but I still think that there's something that the human being has that comes through in a connection. And I don't know if a computer could, could replace that. Okay, this, is, this is my opinion. No, I agree. Computers don't have a soul. <clears throat> Excuse me. No. People like to think that they do, but they don't. Um, for, just, to, just to be clear, your, a resume should have the key words that match up. Doubt with the position that you're applying for right if you if absolutely you, right so and that, they should be truthful oh oh i was don't just put the keywords because just, they're in the job did you just look at my notes i was we were just no, about I, to talk about transparency <laughs> right transparency yes. so from an ats perspective make sure that your resume matches the position that you're applying for I'm going to give you a perfect example. We, you know, we get some jobs where they look for somebody who's bilingual, mm -hmm. German or Chinese or whatever. And we look at resumes and obviously we search for that word, bilingual Mandarin or bilingual there you go. German. There you go. And we're going through. And then we start to look at, at names. And we say, mm -hmm. This person, they went to school in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. They grew up in Hong Kong, but it doesn't yeah. say Chinese. And I always take the position to my staff. I tell, call them and ask. Right? There you go. And you can't, I can't tell you how many times we'll call and say, do you speak Mandarin? They go, yeah. Why isn't it on your resume? Put it on the resume. Oh, I didn't think of it. Okay, so, you know, <laughs> look at your resume. Look at your background. Look, that's a strength. Look at your strengths. Look within. What do I have that a potential employer may want? No matter how uh, minute it may seem, it may be a skill that's important. Okay? It may be a software you used once five years ago. Make sure it's on there, okay? You know, maybe you you were the treasurer of your school's newspaper, okay? And, and as treasurer, you paid the bills. 
So now you have accounts payable experience. Get that in there. Get that okay? in there. Think it through. Think it through. I agree. I agree. And, um, and just to expand a little bit on being transparent on your resume, uh, know that whatever information you put down will be verified. Yes. Right? Yes. And Absolutely. you want to talk a little bit about how you're how you verify information? Well, we, we ask every candidate for references, number one. Uh, we ask for manager, supervisor, and coworker. Okay, we want to get a picture of who the person was or is. So that's the first thing. Um, when someone puts a skill on their resume, we ask them, where did you do it? When did you do it? How did you do it? Mm. Okay. And if you all of a sudden, and I'm going to date myself, you become Jackie Gleason and go, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, okay, we know you didn't do it, okay? And most of the listeners out there aren't even going to know what I'm talking about with Jackie Gleason. It's scary to be so old. But anyway, <laughs> right? Um, He's a comedian, and that's what he used to say. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. So make sure you, if you put it down there, be able to verify and justify oh, that yes. you've done it, okay? And that leads me to maybe a pet peeve that i can i'll bring up as a as a recruiting firm if you have zero of the skills and experience for a particular position don't apply you know you're you're wasting everyone's time not the least of this which is yours you know it's very easy today to just hit apply i mean we've been running some postings uh, for, for my organization for clients we had one spot up uh, this week for a, um, a compliance specialist uh -huh. I'm getting plumbers, salespeople. They don't have any of the skills, okay? So, you know, if you want to get your resume in front of me, don't send it to me for that posting. Reach out to me and tell me, look, I, I'd like to work with your organization. Do you have anything for me? We don't turn down resumes, at least we don't, okay? Because we always, I, I always say never, I never say never, okay? So I may not have something for that particular skill set today, but I may have it next week or make them in tomorrow. So we, you know, we always want the resumes anyway, but don't just apply blindly because what you're doing is, is, is clogging up the system. Right. So with a minute left, <clears throat> excuse me. Wow. It went fast. I know it went super fast, but we covered a lot of ground, right? Lynn, mm -hmm. I think valuable yes. ground. Um, I'm big on soft skills, interpersonal skills. Let's just talk a little bit about that. Why is it important to be personable when you reach out to folks and, and meet with them? Why is it important to be personable? Yes. Well, I mean, it's a representation of you, but you know what, I'm gonna say something. If, if you're an introvert, it may be difficult to come sure. across as, as very personable. So, uh, you know, try your best, okay? And you know, every, everybody's not everything to everybody. So, you know, be, be true to who you are, okay? And, and I'll tell you, if you are an introvert, and there's nothing wrong with that, okay, uh, don't come across as this wildly extroverted person on the interview. Because that'll be weird. <laughs> it'll be weird, okay? And if that's the type of person the client or the company wants, and then you go in and you're in your, your hole, <laughs> you know, you sit at your desk and you don't talk to anybody, then you say, what they send their evil twin? What happened? <laughs> so, you know, and the evil twin, that's, that's a topic for another discussion <laughs> when they send the evil twin in. Um, so, you know, be, be who you are, okay? Yes. And find out. And if the job posting says we're looking for an extroverted person, which they may, all right? Uh, and that's not you. You can't, you know, you can't force yourself into that job, okay? Because you're going to be unhappy anyway. I agree. So, it, it, right, keeping in mind that they're introverts and extroverts, be true to yourself. Be true to yourself, professional. Think about your background. Think about your virtual background. Think about what you put on your resume, what's in it. Uh, make sure that you uh, check it. Use Grammarly. Ask someone to look at it. Be realistic, right, when you apply for positions. Absolutely. Have you demonstrated transferable skills? And if you don't have the skills for the job, then maybe that's an inclination to get them, but don't submit for a role or a position that you have no background in. Reach sure. out to folks, right? You don't have to reach out to an entity like ACG, right? With Len Adams for a job, reach out to just discuss what options are out there and stay positive. 
you know, that Atlantic, uh, that Atlantic uh, article that I, I quoted, very informative, but really, really negative. And I don't, I don't think that we need to be negative about it. I think you should always be optimistic to the best of your ability. I do want to make one more point yes. on that. Don't be afraid to ask people for advice. Reach out to your networks, your parents' networks, your friends' networks, your alumni, even if it's not for a specific job. Ask, what can I do? Can you point me to someone? Okay, and especially nowadays with a lot of people working home, there's a lot less distraction in the office. Mm -hmm. So I'm finding a lot more people are easier to get on the phone, believe it or not. So, you know, don't, don't be afraid to reach out to people. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Well, Lynn, this was fantastic. Um, I'm glad we did this. And I'm, I, yes, I really too. look forward to folks giving us feedback on what their thoughts are. Um, next week, you'll get another surprise topic. Okay. I know you mentioned evil twin. Not quite ready for that yet. But let's see. All right. I'll have to look up. <laughs> um, thank you, dear viewers and dear listeners. Until next week, Lynn, hold on for a second. Don't move. Thank you.